In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the easing section of the Info Semantics component widgets. Currently, there are two component widgets available, the slider component widget and the rotator component widget. In the future, there may be more. In either case, whatever component widget you have, this lesson is going to apply to it. What the easing section allows you to do, it is allows you to add animation to your interactions. Now this is going to be something that's going to be easier to show you rather than to tell you. So let's jump in and have a look at an example here. Already on stage, I have a slider set up here with a track and a handle, and it is tied into this slide variable here. And if I test the movie, I can drag the handle back and forth over here and according to its position, it is updating this Captivate variable. So if it's all the way to the left here, the Captivate variable has a value of one. If it is all the way to the right, the Captivate variable has a value of 100. Now down here, I have two captions and these are tied into these InfoSemantics event handler widgets. And what the event handler widgets are doing are waiting to see if we click on these captions. What I want to happen is if I click on this start caption that the sliders handle jumps all the way back to the left side of the track. And if I click on this end caption, the sliders handle is going to jump all the way to the end of the track. So to do this, I'm going to select this event handle widget and it's on success action is going to run when we click on that start caption. So I'm going to choose for its on success action to assign slider with one, which should send it all the way to the left. And for the event handle widget tied to the end caption, I'm going to set it to assign slider with 100. Okay, test the movie. So at the start here, I can still drag my slider around. But if I click on end, you can see the handle jumps over to the right hand of the track. If I click start, it jumps over there. So I can just click those buttons as many times as I want and the handles jumping back and forth. But notice when I do click on one of them, when I click on end here, the handle jumps over to that endpoint immediately. Wouldn't it be nice if we could add some animation so it transitions to that value rather than jumping there immediately? Well, this is what easing allows you to do. Let's close out this preview, go into the slider component widget, jump down to the easing section, and then turn that on. Let's break down the different sections of the easing here. First of all, up the top, we get to choose what style of easing. For the moment, I'm just going to go with normal in this example. We'll have a look at what the slider does in a second, as well as this stuff underneath the normal easing graphic. Next, I want to have a look at this easing duration over here. Now, this determines how long it's going to take the slider component widget to transition to this new value of the Captivate variable. I'm going to set it to a very slow two seconds. Okay, let's test the movie. Now I'm going to click the end variable. And as I do so, you can see that the slider is gradually moving over to the other side. When I click the start variable, you can see the handle shifts over that way as well. Now you may or may not be able to see it in the movie here because the frame rate has been reduced, but this animation here of the slider moving is not entirely smooth. And that is because it's animating from a value of 100 to one, so it's got a range of 100 there. However, the number of pixels is actually moving across is around 400. If I go here, select my track, you see it's got a width of 430, whereas the handle has got a width of 30 itself. So altogether, it's traveling across 400 pixels. So that means every time we add one to this slider variable, this handle is traveling across four pixels. So in order to add to the smoothness of this animation, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change the sliders max value from 100 to 400. I'll click OK. Then I'll select my end event handler widget and change it so that I assign slider with 400 instead of 100. Okay, let's test the movie. 
and then play it back. Now, I don't know if you can see this once again, but if you're following along at home, you'll notice that this animation is now much smoother. Okay, let's go back into the easing section and have a look at some of the other options here. Now, underneath the normal section here, I've got this slider. And if I grab onto the slider and pull it this way, you can see how the normal graphic changes. What this is doing is changing the intensity of the ease. Now, what do I mean by intensity? First of all, I'm just going to drag the slider back around to here. So I've got a bit of a medium intensity on this. Then I'll click OK, press F8. And now when I click the end, you'll notice, OK, at the start there, the handle moved rather quickly. And then as it approached the end of its animation, it started to slow down. Let's have a look at it, that again when I click the start caption. So that's a much smoother, more natural animation. And I can change the intensity of how much it starts and stops over in the easing section by twiddling with this slider. So if I send it all the way to the edge there, click OK, test the movie. And then when I click the end, you can see that this animation is now much more ferocious than it was initially. So if I go back into my widget here in the easing section, at the moment I've got underneath here three images. One's called Ease In. The one selected is called Ease Out, and there's another one called Ease In Out. If I choose Ease In, click OK, and then test the movie, and then click on End, you'll notice that instead of starting out fast and ending slow, this animation starts out slow and ends fast. So that's because now it is easing into the value, rather as before it was easing out of the value. But we can also go inside here and we can choose this other value here, which is called ease in and out. Click OK, test the movie. Now when the easing happens, you can see it starts out slow, becomes fast and then ends slow again, because now it's easing in and easing out as well. So that is what those little images underneath your selected easing style mean. Okay, so if I go over here to bounce, and I'm going to choose ease in and out. Now what we've done is we've changed the easing style. I'll click OK, preview the movie to see what this easing style looks like. Click on end, and you can see the animation starts out and it actually hits the edge or the value that it was supposed to go to and then it bounces off and then eventually comes to a rest like a, a ball would should you drop it. So that is one of the styles of easing you can choose to use in your interactions. The other type is called elastic. And if I choose that, you can see already from the graphic what sort of animation this is going to be. It, it's going to animate to the point we told it to, then it's actually going to extend past that, come back in and then sort of wobble in and out until it comes to a rest. I'll click OK and initially with how we've got this easing setup, it's not going to look very pretty. So when I click end, you can see it's just going slamming against the edge there, bouncing off a little and then bouncing off like that. Not very appealing. So we can edit this and make this a bit better by going over to my widget here. And instead of assigning the slider with 400, let's assign it with uh, 320. And when I uh, set start, let's assign it with 80 instead of one. Let's test again. So now when I click end and start, you can see now we've given this animation a bit more leeway for it to be able to extend and to wobble about and come to a rest. So now that we know the basics of how to use the easing section, let's jump over to another example. Over here, I have a rotator widget set up to work with a metronome. So I can grab the metronome and I can move it back and forth like that. But what I'd really like to happen is I want this metronome to move back and forth by itself. And by using easing, I can get this to happen. So let's go and start setting up this interaction. First of all, I'm going to go into the easing section. I'm going to turn it on. And for this one, I want a nice ease in and out. I want it to go over here slowly and then start back up and move slowly like that. Ease in and out is going to do that for me. And I'm just going to use the uh, slider strength there. For ease duration, one second is going to work fine. And 
we're going to need to use this initial easing section and to understand how this works first of all let's have a look at something else okay now if I go over here and have a look at my variables notice how I have my metronome variable here which is the one that the which is the variable that this interaction is tied into and it has an initial value of 100 okay that is the maximum the value for the rotator widget here if I test the movie you can see that the metronome is starting out all the way to the right however if I go back here to my variables and I change metronome so it now starts out with a value of 1 update close test now the metronome is starting out swung to the left so the rotator's initial position is determined by what the captivate variables initial value is so if I move over here to my easing section I can if I turn on initial easing this is going to mean that instead of the rotator widget starting out in the same position as the captivate variable it is attached to it is instead going to ease or animate into that value so all I have to do here is say from what value I want it to start easing into the captivate variables value and for that I want it to start at its maximum value 100 and I'll click OK and let's see how that works okay you can see that right at the beginning there it's swinging into that value now all I need to get it to do is to sw start swinging back and just keep on doing that so in order to get that to work I'm going to need to use the evaluate section of the widget now we've already got a lesson up on YouTube for how to use the evaluate section so I suggest you go have a look at that because I'm going to be running quite fast through this area so up the top here where I get to choose when this widget evaluates I'm going to choose easing end so that means when the ease comes to end the widget is going to report success or failure so I want this widget to report success if it's uh, got a value of 50 or greater so that means it's you know that 50 would be about in the middle of its easing and then I want it to report failure if it's 50 or under so I'm going to leave it set to opposite here click OK now over in my widgets properties over here for the success action I'm going to choose to assign the metronome captivate variable with a value of well let me think about this okay so this widget is reporting success if the metronome has a value of 50 or greater so most likely it's all the, already swung all the way to the right which would be its 100 value so I want it to send it back the other way which means I need it to animate to a value of 1 so I'm going to choose to assign this with 1 then I'm going to do the opposite for failure I, I live near dogs and buses and planes and a freeway I apologize okay let's have a look at this okay and now you can see the animation is moving back and forth all by itself but uh, <laughs> yeah we do have a little bit of problem the widget is going to automatically pause the slide but when it reports success it's also going to automatically start playing the slide again which means that it's only going to go back and forth a little while like that and then it's going to move to another slide so to get around this what we can do is we can go into the rot rotator components settings and under miscellaneous we got settings here for pausing I'm going to choose to disable continue and that means that when this widget reports success it is still going to you know keep the movie paused so now we can see that it is moving back and forth happy as Larry just continuing like that okay we do have a little bit of a problem here because the animation is not as smooth as it could be we're running into that little issue that we had with the slider as well we need to give the uh, maximum and a bit of a larger value so I'm going to choose to have a maximum of 300 which means I'll need to go over to my easing section and change it so that it eases from 300 there and of course go over here to the metronome section assign that with 300 as well and let's test the movie once again I don't know if you're going to see the results of this with the limited frame rate of this movie but if you're following along at home you'll see that this is now a much smoother animation okay now let's just go one step further and have a sound play when the metronome hits the its center to do that I'm going to change 
up a few things about my widget. First of all, I'm going to go in here to the evaluate section and I'm going to change it so that if the score is greater than or equal to one, then the widget is going to report success. So that's basically saying to the widget, hey, report success all the time. Why do I want to do that? Well, because I'm going to change tactics a bit. I'm not going to use this uh, last attempt failure action anymore. I'm going to set that to no action. Instead, I'm going to use an advanced action and I've already set one up ahead of time called metronome. Let's open up that up and see what it does. So here I have a conditional action that if metronome, the variable that the rotating object widget is tied to, if that variable is greater than 150, which is in the middle of 300, then I want to assign the metronome with one, else I want to assign the metronome with 300. So that's basically the same thing that we had before uh, using these uh, there's success and failure actions over here. But I've got one extra, see, I live near an airport. I've got one extra s section over here for sound. So that's always going to execute and it's going to play this audio clip called metronome click one. And if I have a look at that, you can see it's got this sound. Okay, there's this little uh, half a second silence in front of it and I'll explain what that's for in just a sec, but let's go and have a look at this interaction and see how it works. Now when the metronome swings back and forth, you can see when it reaches the middle there, it's clicking, except on that first click. On that first time it swings, it doesn't click because it has not been told to swing by an advanced action, see? Now it clicks. So to get around that, what I'm going to do is go to the slides on interaction get it to play an audio, and I'm going to get it to play that metronome click. Now I've got that 0.5 second silence there because the widget is running that advanced action when it is swung all the way to the right. However, a metronome will only click when it is in the center. So, in all, so I know that this metronome action of swimming back and forth is going to take one second. So half a second into the animation, it's going to be at its high point. So uh, that's when we want it to click. That's why we've got a half a second silence there. Click OK. Let's have a look at this interaction again. Yeah, brings back good memories of piano lessons. Click, click. OK. So now you know the basics of how to use the evaluate section of the component widgets. And I hope that gives you some ideas of what you can do. And it, we've just seen a very few things that you can do. We can make a lot more elaborate animations with this as you'll begin to see in some of the following tutorials that we have coming up.